Hi, it's Miss Leslie from You've Got Mentoring Academy, and today we are reading The Notebook of Doom, Whack of the P-Rex by Troy Cummings. And apparently this book was owned by a kid named Young Money. Table of Contents. This is a big boy. Chapter 1, Bed Bugged. Alexander watched the six-legged creature creep out of the tunnel. It wiggled its antenna, then it lifted a big white crystal above its shiny black shell. Alexander leaned in. There was a hundred more of these things crawling around. Hey kiddo, said Alexander's dad. It, is that an ant farm? Yeah, said Alexander. We've been studying ants all week for science class. Our farms are due tomorrow. Look at them go, said Alexander's dad. All those legs and antenna and those sharp jaws, they give me the willies. Alexander smiled. They're just ants, dad. I know, Al, he said, his dad said, but they're so creepy. Alexander had seen these much creepier. Miss Leslie, learn how to read. Alexander had seen things much creepier than bugs since moving to Stearmont. He had seen monsters, slimy, drooling, chomping, honest to badness monsters. The town was full of them. Creepy or not, your ant farm is awesome, his dad said. I'm super proud of you, Al. Alexander smiled. Thanks, dad. He gave his dad a good night squeeze and climbed into bed. Sleep tight, said Alexander's dad. He pointed to the ant farm and said, and don't let the bed bugs bite. Ugh. Alexander waited for his dad to close the door. And then he pulled under, he reached under his pillow and pulled out an old notebook. He had found the notebook on his first day in Stearmont and had been studying it ever since. It was filled with drawings and notes about monsters. Alexander started to open the notebook. Then he froze. He should hear the faint screech, screech of the ants digging around, or at least he thought he could. Well, he thought, maybe ants are a little creepy. He buried his head under his pillow. Chapter two, falling into step. Why are you walking like a zombie? Alexander knew that gruff sounding voice without looking up. Good morning, Rip, he said. I'm trying to keep my ant farm from shaking. I don't want to mess up the tunnels. Yeesh, said Rip. It's just a box of bugs. Who cares? He gave his ant farm a toss in the air. Alexander kept his eyes on his ants. Oh, great, he said. Here comes another zombie, and this one's wearing a hoodie. There it goes. Nikki shuffled into view, holding her ant farm at arm's length. Go kiss a balloon, goon. Rip, she said. Alexander laughed. Rip and Nikki were his two best friends, and this was about as good as the two of them ever got along. Together, the three friends were the only members of the super secret monster patrol, the SSMP. They went to school by day and battled monsters by night and morning and late afternoon, weekends too. SSMP, don't get eaten. Look at that. You guys can take baby steps to school if you want, said Rip, but I'm not going to creep around like a sleepwalking zombie because some weenie is ants. And that's, ooh, candy. Alexander peeked over his ant farm. Pieces of candy lay scattered all over the sidewalk. Rip was on his knees, scooping up much as much candy as he could. Don't eat that, said Alexander. You don't know where. Too late, said Rip. He popped a lemon sucker in his mouth. Wow, super sour. Ugh hate sour candy. Was there a parade? said Nikki. Sometimes people throw candy from parade floats and look there are strips of paper like confetti near the curb. Alexander thought for a moment. I think we would have heard if there was if there had been a parade. Especially a parade where some something crashed into a pole. Alexander pointed up his nearby lamppost. At the nearby lamppost. Rip gave his sucker a slurp. Yow, it's totally wrecked. This lamppost was fine yesterday, Alexander said. He took a step back to look at the damage. That means, whoa. Alexander stumbled and fell backwards onto a huge hole. 
Salamander, yelled Nikki. Are you okay? Salamander was Alexander's nickname. His friends called him that when they were joking around during homework together or helping him climb out of a big hole. Oh no, said Alexander. He held up his aunt, his aunt farm. The glass was cracked and the sand was shaken up. Alexander slid the ant farm into his backpack. Sorry, ants. I didn't even see that hole. Ugh, Salamander, said Rip. He crunched off the he crunched off the rest of his sucker and pointed to the ground with his stick. That's no hole. It's a giant footprint. Ooh, yeah, it is. Step three. Swept up. That footprint was as big as a kiddie pool, said Alexander. He lagged behind Rip and Nikki as they walked up the hill toward school. His nose was buried in the notebook. What could have made such a supersized footprint? asked Rip. It had to be a monster, Alexander said. He flipped to a page with sticky purple thumbprints along one side. Listen to this, guys. Ooh. Trample hamster. Cute little critter with enormous feet. Habit. That strip of grass between the sidewalk. And, oh, habitat. That strip of sidewalk between the grass and the sidewalk of the street. Well, they were on the street. Shoe in. Trample hamsters si wear a size of 340. Diet. Anything flat and round. Pancakes, tortillas, bologna slices. Behavior. Trample hamsters love stomping things flat with their perfectly round elephant feet. Warning. Trample hamsters dislike yeast. Waddle around honking to avoid getting flattened. Alexander closed the notebook. Hmm, I'm not sure if our foot make our footprint maker was a trample hamster. Let's ask the oldest member of the SSMP, said Rip, pointing. Him? said Nikki. He never wants to help. They watched a tall, shaky, white haired man push a tall, shaky, white haired broom in front of their school. Mr. Horsley, said Alexander. Mr. Horsley was the school secretary. He was also the bus driver, the nurse, the gym coach, and today, a janitor. Oh, hi, said Mr. Horsley. Oh, kids can be so messy. Someone spilled candy on the sidewalk. Candy, said Alexander. He and Nikki gave each other a look. Don't mind if I do, said Rip. He jumped in front of Mr. Horsley's broom to snatch up a piece of bubble gum. So Mr. Horsley, said Alexander, we uh, stumbled across a huge footprint on the way to school. Do you think there could be a trample hamster in town? Well, trample hamsters do have big feet, said Mr. Horsley. They make round footprints and, hey, we had a deal. You run the SSMP now. My monster fighting days are over. But, said Nikki, shh. Just then, the school doors slid open. Eep, Mr. Horse said Mr. Horsley drove into a trash can. Dove into a trash can. A huge bug-eyed ant monster peek peeked out of the doors. It had a hard shell, long antenna, and a mean looking mouth. The monster's head turned slowly. I've been looking for you three, it said. Mm. Chapter four, Showstopper. Actually, it wasn't an ant monster popping out of the doors. It was Alexander's teacher, Mr. Plunkett. He was wearing a full-bodied ant suit. Happy ant day, students, he said. Head to the auditorium right away. We're having a surprise assembly. He handed Alexander a red flyer. Grab a seat and guard your sweets for ant day. Where? The auditorium. When? Right now. Oh, said Alexander, said Mr. Plunkett. Oh, and Alexander, said Mr. Plunkett, chuckling. Did something follow you out of the bathroom this morning? Huh? said Alexander. You've got toilet paper stuck on your shoe, said Nikki. Alexander looked down. Sure enough, a white strip of paper trailed between his heels. He tore it off and tossed it in the trash. Okay, sticky foot, said Rip. Let's head, let's head to the auditorium and get this over with. Alexander followed his friends into Stearmont Elementary, which used to be Stearmont High School Hospital. This building has an auditorium, he asked. They came to the set of doors. Operating theater. Yeah, said Nikki. There used to be a room where doctors would watch other doctors do surgery. Ugh, 
we're going to need surgery on our brains after sitting through Mr. Plunkett's Ant Day assembly, said Rip. The three friends sat on the back of their crowded auditorium. A moment later, the lights went out. Rip tossed a piece of bubblegum into his mouth. Mr. Plunkett came into the stage in his ant suit. He was wheeling out something tall and flat, covering by a sheet. Good morning, Stearmont Elementary, Mr. Plunkett said. Every year, I have my students keep ant farms, and every year, I collect those ant farms. But where do I put all these ants? The crowd was silent. Rip snapped his gum. Mr. Plunkett smiled. I add them to this. He yanked away the sheet, revealing a glass rectangle the size of a billboard. The glass was filled with sand. The sand was filled with tunnels, and the tunnels were filled with ants. Millions of them. A giant ant farm, said Alexander. That's no farm. That's a city. The crowd cheered until a voice shouted from off stage, Stop! Look at that, that's a big ant farm. Everyone gasped as Principal Vanderp Vanderpants pulled onto the stage, charged onto the stage. Mr. Plunkett took a few steps back. How dare you bring these insects into Stearmont Elementary, said Miss Vanderpants. Especially after what happened to our old school. Alexander looked over to his friends. Nikki shrugged. Rip was busy blowing a bubble. I er, um, you said that this assembly would be educational, Mrs. Vanderpant said, but instead you've brought a millions of pests. Move this project outside behind the school. She faced the audience. Students, you'll have lunch early today. Bring your backpacks. Afterward, you will have science class outside on the playground. The students cheered louder than before. Mr. Plunkett's antenna dropped as he dragged his ant farm off stage. Now, Mrs. Vanderpants continued, I will be giving you a surprise spelling quiz. The cheering stopped. Your first word is, she paused. Then she pointed to the back row. Ripley Bonkowski, she growled. No gum in school. And he popped his gum. Chapter five, shake on it. After the world's longest spelling quiz, the students headed to the cafeteria. All right, said Nikki. I miss having pie for lunch. Alexander, Rip, and Nikki sat at their usual table. Alexander pulled his lunchbox out of his backpack. It was covered in sand from his cracked ant farm. Hey, Nikki, he said. I packed some strawberry gummies for you. Thanks, Salamander. Nikki smiled, flashing her sharp-looking fangs. She was secretly a monster, a good monster called a jampire. Jampires loved red juicy treats. Alexander brushed his lunch off his lunchbox and flipped it open. Ah! He jumped out of his chair. Rip and Nikki peeked inside the lunchbox. It was full of ants. Most of them were crawling around all the red gummies. Look, looks like the ants really do love the sweet stuff, said Rip. Those, were those ants in your backpack? Asked Nikki, taking an ant-free gummy. They must have crawled out of my cracked ant farm. So much for that science project. Alexander sat back down. He checked his sandwich for bugs. There were none. He took a bite as he watched the ants march out of his lunchbox. Cheer up, said Rip. It's not like Pluckett needed any more ants. There were a zillion in the ant farm. He tossed Alexander a peppermint. Alexander made a yuck face. This is more side is this more sidewalk candy? Yep, said Rip. I still have a few pieces left. Uh no thanks, Alexander said. He scooted the peppermint back to Rip. We really need to figure out what kind of monster left that footprint. I don't think it's a trample monster or trample hamster, since the footprint wasn't round. But it still must be big enough to Boom. There was a thundering rumble as the whole building shook for a few seconds. The cafeteria grew quiet. There is a fly in this room. What was that? Asked Rip. Was that an earthquake? Asked Nikki. Alexander shook his head. It, the loudspeaker, he was, he was interrupted by the loudspeaker. Attention, this is Principal Vanderpants. You have noticed a minor vibration. This shaking was likely caused by bulldozers at our new school building down the street. There is no reason to panic. 
all those ants come out of his lunchbox. Alexander watched the ants scurry down the table, table leg out of sight. I think those ants have the right idea. Chapter six, cracked up. Class outside is going to be awesome, said Rip. Alexander slid his sandy lunchbox into his backpack. As long as we don't get squashed by a huge footprint leaving monster, he said. Alexander, Rip, and Nikki followed their classmates to the playground. Rip stopped talking and started laughing. What? asked Alexander. Second time today, he said. Rip pointed to Alexander's left foot. Oh, he's got toilet paper stuck to his foot again. Alexander looked down. A pink square of paper clung to his shoe. He rolled his eyes and tore it off. Line up, everyone, Mr. Plunkett shouted. He had set up his ant city near the jungle gym. Have your ant farms out. It's time to move your ants into their new home. Alexander watched as the other students gave Mr. Plunkett their farms filled with ants. Finally, it was his turn. Let's see what you've got, Mr. Plunkett said. Alexander handed over his cracked ant farm. Sand spilled to the ground. A single dizzy ant ran alongside the frame. Oh, sorry, said Alexander. It kind of broke. Well, one ant is better than none, he added Alexander's aunt to his aunt city. Welcome to Antville, little guy, he said. Then he turned to the class. Alexander's ant farm may have cracked, he said, but that won't happen to Antville. Talk, talk, talk. He tapped the thick glass. A wrecking ball couldn't crack this baby. Mr. Plunkett nodded down toward the school. I wish I could say the same for this place. Alexander looked up and gasped. <gasps> An enormous crack ran down the side of the Stremont Elementary. At the bottom of the crack, there were two wide holes. More giant footprints, whispered, whispered Alexander. And check it out, said Mr. said Rip, pointing. Another pile of candy. The earthquake at lunch, said Nikki. Come on, Nikki. We know it wasn't an earthquake. It was the huge footprint-making monster attacking our school. Chapter 7 hole in the wall. Alexander kept looking over his shoulder on the walk home. Keep your eyes peeled, he said. This monster could be nearby. So what kind of monster is it? Rip asked. It must be enormous. Alexander, sh Alexander shook sand out of his notebook. There's a super big one. Here's a super big one, he said. Read the page aloud. Sky scraper scraper. Fifty story tall snail covered in spikes. Habitat forty nine story building. Tall buildings. Diet bricks, glass, and steel. Slowpoke. Skyscraper scrapers always come in last place. Behavior. This monster grinds its spiky shell against tall buildings. It eats whatever falls out. Warning. Skyscraper scrapers are only afraid of one thing. French chefs carry a spatula and say bonjour a lot to stay safe. What do you what do you think guys? Alexander stopped shutting the notebook. I don't know said Rip. He pulled a chocolate drop into his mouth. That snail thing attacks skyscrapers not lampposts in grade schools. Good point, said Alexander. I wonder if, boom, the ground shook. A trash can fell over. Its lid rolled down the sidewalk, stopping at Alexander's feet. Do you feel that? Alexander asked. The air was still. In the distance, a woman was jogging with her dog. Over there, behind the roller rink, said Nikki. She pointed to a roundish building nearby. They watched birds scatter from the roller rink and the trees were shaking. Rip swallowed. That must be, boom, the tree shook even more. And then, grrr, a terrible lizard-shaped monster rose above the roller rink. It was partly hidden by trees. Alexander squinted. Is that a dinosaur? He asked. I think so. Just then, the jogger bounced, talk, talking to his little dog. Some strange weather we're having. Huh, Snippy? She jogged off, smiling. The dinosaur... Thing is right here said Nikki how could she not have seen it hold on is it moving the monster dropped down behind the dog roller rink Alexander started coming toward the rink 
Come on, guys, we need to get a closer look. They ran over and peeked around the edge of the building. Where'd that dino thing go? Asked Nikki, looking around. I don't know, said Rip, but look what it did. A huge hole had been smashed into the brick wall of the roller rink. There was a giant footprint everywhere. Hundreds of candies lay scattered around. The dino thing is definitely our building basher, said Alexander. But what's the candy? Asked Nikki. We've seen globs of it next to everything. This monster has smashed. Maybe it's bait, said Alexander. Maybe the, can the monster throws candy around the trap to, to trap the kids and eat it. In that case, let's scram. He pocketed the jawbreaker. Yeah, and I should get home. It's almost dinner time, said Alexander. But tomorrow's Saturday. Let's meet at SSMP headquarters first thing in the morning to make battle plans, said Rip. Yes, in the meantime, said Nikki, try not to get stepped on. Alexander looked back at the extra, extra large footprints, and then he ran home. We're going to stop at chapter eight, and we're going to go to a new video. So until next time, we're going to find out what happens in the Notebook of Doom, Whack of the P-Rex. Bye.